listening to, to PBN. Your path back to stability here. The news is dead, PBN family. Welcome into uh, PBN Daily News. The standards, sort of the gold standards, or not maybe not even the gold standards, but the standards of daily news, like where I go and where I used to go to find. You know what the big problem is right now is future danger is down. Futuredanger.com is a great place to go for day-to-day news. Trudge Report. Used to be where I would go. It's a fallen website. It's it's a captured website, <laughs> to use a phrase. <clears throat> and I spent a, you know like twenty minutes going to a variety of sites. I went to the BlazeMedia dot com. I went to the Daily Wire. I never really went to these sites for news, and they were kind of you know predictably conservative politics conservative issues and political issues and i don't know it's more to life than that you know i think our our obsession with the political sort of gridiron <laughs> is not only bad for us it's boring do you know what i mean like it's pretty boring like how deeply can you pry into any person's life or person's actions or whatever before it gets really boring? And the problem right now is it's not only boring, it's predictable. Do you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a, first of all, it's a boring game to be involved in from the get go. And the left and the right have carved out such a weird hole that I don't know. It's boring. You know, it's like, you know, all of next week's news before you read it. When something happens, when something comes up, you know exactly how both sides are going to react. No one's going to say anything profound or interesting. Nobody's going to think it through. It's the age of content creation that's killing news and, and interests. Do you know what I mean? Like it's the concept of I have to put a video out. I have to get people upset or whatever. Now, I have to give credit where credit's due. Google, because of my use of a Samsung, right, Google has over the years kind of tailored a news feed to what it is I like to read about. And it's way better. Like, just going into my silly Google news feed is way more interesting than any site I happened on today. U.S. will require background checks for gun shows and online firearm sales. That's kind of old news. Um, Six best games with simultaneous local and online co-op. Now I'm interested. Okay. CinemaCon released footage of the remake of Nosferatu starring Bill Skarsgård. I'm excited about that. I'm interested in that. This is a great story. Okay. What I'm, I'm not saying these are the most important stories of the day. I'm saying these are stories that are at all interesting. Do you know what I mean? To some degree interesting, other than Trump, how much money for Trump, Trump lawyer, Trump the China and Biden, Kamala and corruption. Do you know what I mean? Abortion, 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 abortion. How much abortion can one nation take? A German art gallery employee snuck in his own art in hopes of a breakthrough. <laughs> now the police are investigating. I, hey, I don't know. It's not a bad move. Uh, then we've got our news week. U.S. map shows how states may be submerged by rising sea levels in 2100. It looks to me like... Uh, the kids better sell our house when we're dead and gone. Because according to Newsweek, it's going to be underwater. All of Florida is gone, by the way. Every 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 bit of the panhandle is underwater. 
<laughs> in in what? In what are we talking here? Twenty one hundred. Okay. Yeah. So in seventy five years, you know, most of the world will be underwater. Mexico completely underwater. Hold on. Oh, maybe this is just states. From what it looks like, it looks like the whole of Mexico. A map shows how the contiguous U.S. coastline would would look if sea levels rise by six feet, with areas of new ocean denoted in light blue. That's impressive. This picture quality is awful. I want a blown up version. I want to look at it. I don't want to sign up. I don't want to do. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. This is the story that's least interesting on the feed so far. Uh, there was a group. Of, there's a group of ladies, a group of historical ladies. They are made to sound like racists of the highest order here in Richmond, Virginia, and they 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 run a nonprofit called the United Daughters of the Confederacy. And largely, what they do is, uh, I'm pretty sure they take care of the graves of the dead soldiers of the South. They don't march and say, like, we want slavery back. They don't, you know, there's none of that. Um, the value, uh, Their values and priorities are in question. <laughs> That's sweet, right? Their values and priorities are in question. They're a 501c3. Nobody's getting rich. You know what I mean? It's, it's, nobody's getting rich in the group. Uh, our, we are grieved that certain hate groups have taken the Confederate flag and other symbols as their own. We are the descendants of Confederate soldiers, sailors, and patriots. Our members are the ones who have spent 128 years honoring their memory by various activities in the fields of education, history, charity, promoting patriotism, and good citizenship. Our members are the ones who, like our statues, have stayed quietly in the background, never engaging in public controversy. I like the way the British say controversy. Controversy. Um, the continued harassment of our ladies and our mission will not deter us from the charitable work we do. You know, it's amazing that they, what, what people expect of the West. Isn't it? I've been thinking about this. In other words, you know, the state of Virginia, they want to take away their tax exemption as a 501c3 because they have the audacity to honor their kin who fought in the civil war right now what the what the general pop i guess and what richmonders would have this group of ladies do you know rather than follow the tradition of 128 years of of doing this what they would have them do is to turn their entire legacy, turn their entire lineage over to villainry, right? To admit that their great-grandfathers were actually, they weren't actually soldiers for a cause. They were all villains, racists of the lowest order. And that's what they're born out of, right? See, that's the way these people think. That's the way they think. You've got your great-grandpa or your great-great-grandpa uh, was a racist monster, and everyone who fought for the South was a racist monster. And not only that, we want you to admit it. And we're going to take away your 501c3 status and force you to admit that. That that's where you come from. You know? It's a wild thing. It's a crazy thing. There's something crazier, though. Crazy as it is for a group of people to gather together in a nation and take another group of people and say, hey, I need you to admit that everyone who came before you was evil and that there's actually evil baked into you uh, because of your skin color. Do you understand? So in other words, you come from, uh, we don't really know where you come from. You just look like you come from colonizers because you, you're white. So we need you to admit that the white people of the world come from evil stock who are hell-bent on, you know, crushing minorities or people with melanated skin. And that's the base, you know, that's the base belief system that we want to push going forward in our country. We think that'll make a better world. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you could just admit that you're you're of uh, the type of breeding stock that you know is good for only subjugation, right? Like th- this is your legacy, or your legacy is enslaving other people. That's crazy enough. But what's more crazy than that? What's even more crazy than that is this statement. The liberal left-wing, postmodernist, you know, what, whatever. You add, a, you add a name or an adjective in front of it and then add liberation after it, race, whatever. The greatest critics, this is the best way to put it, the greatest critics of the Western world Okay, the strongest and the most staunch critics of the Western world are actually the most effective white supremacists of all time. I'll say it again because it's crazy. But the, the greatest critics of Western civilization are actually the ones who argue white supremacy harder and better than anyone. Why is that? How could that be? That doesn't even make sense. So in other words, the people with the Palestinian flags, the people with the Black Lives Matter flags, the people in the streets who hold the Western society's feet to the fire, they're actually the greatest white supremacists of all time. Why is that? How? It's because they hold Western civilization to a higher standard than the rest of the world. Right? The types of freedoms, the types of goals, the types of things that are expected from a Western society uh, are basically incompatible with many societies elsewhere, even many, many major world powers. Just think about that. The rights and the freedoms that so many people have come to expect in, in a quote-unquote good society or whatever uh, – they don't exist in China. Largely, they don't exist in Africa. Do you know what I mean? So these people who who push and push and push on the evil, racist, uh, what's the other words? I don't know. You, you know the words. The non-inclusive, the, the, the xenophobic, the homophobic nature of particularly Western white Christian society, right? What they've done is they've taken our whole society and and put it up on a pedestal fundamentally and said, we're going to hold Europe and America and Canada largely to an entirely different standard than the rest of the world. And everything that happens worldwide, every action that is taken by people in the Western civilization are going to be looked at through an entirely different lens than the rest of the world. So what are you saying? <laughs> what, what are you arguing? How is that equality? You know what I'm saying? What you're saying is that the, the reason that you're going to march in the streets of New York City and Chicago and be in every campus and, and you know what I mean? have this fundamental attack on Western ideas. It's quite... While atrocities happen in Africa, the Middle East, China, Asia, largely spread out, even in India, you know why these atro- crazy atrocities are happening in, in insane numbers, right? Like the things that are happening to Muslims in Yemen, insane. China, insane. Nobody's marching. There's no march. But the idea that we can march every weekend in in London or we can march uh, all the time in America and hold them to this separate standard says what? What's it say? So the way that I look at it is exactly that. And these people who claim to hate Western civilization, the American way and so on and so forth... uh, the great critics of Western civilization are actually, you know, sticking us into the forge 
and forging us into something even stronger. <laughs> In other words, it's it, they're making the argument for Western Western ideals everywhere, which it seems to be the exact opposite of what they claim to want. They're saying that this group, this group should be held to a higher standard. Why? I mean, I agree with them, sure. Because we solve a lot of problems. We've done a lot of amazing things. I don't know. Even the attack on Western Civ is getting kind of boring, right? The The problem, I think, now is not as many people are buying it. Inside Kamala Harris' fast Arizona trip after abortion ruling. So Kamala come flying in. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on now? What the hell is going on now? I don't know. <sighs> All right. What else? We won't read into anything. I'll give you a couple more topics. How to see the next 20 years of eclipses. Not interested. The nine-book Batman graphic novel box set is only $60. Yeah. I don't know what they are, but I'll read that. Thank God uh, Glenn Youngkin is taking the skill games bill and rewriting it. Thank heavens. Holy Grail NES Castlevania sells for over $90,000. What? I don't know. There's just a variety of things worth looking into and reading and learning about. Do you understand? In other words, don't go to a website that says the most important thing you read about is the abortion bills in various states and Donald Trump's taxes and, and Joe Biden falling down the steps. Like, it's be- life is better and bigger. Do you know what I mean? Enjoy it a little, would you? Oh, L. Douglas Hogan is up with The Rising Republic. Take back our infrastructure. It's an awesome show, man. He's got a really great guest. It's up right now. Listen to it after you get done here. Or maybe you already listened to it. I don't know. Um, let's get into April 15th. One threat, one solution, PBN family. Look, globally on April 15th, globally now, I don't know who's decided this is going to be global, and I don't know what the mechanisms of communication are, but pro-Palestinians plan to disrupt the economy and businesses. Now, just listen to this and you tell me, is this a protest or is this an attack? Think, Just think it over. Pro-Palestinians plan to disrupt the economy and businesses by targeting economic key points of interest. The direct action claims to block, quote, the arteries of capitalism and jamming the wheels of production, unquote. Palestine supporters have directed participants to, quote, identify and blockade major choke points in the economy, focusing on points of production and circulation with the aim of causing the most economic impact. Is that a protest or is that an attack? Is that a protest or is that an insurrection? (laughs) Is that a Jan 6 style insurrection? Is that a protest? What is that? Flood Wall Street for Gaza event in New York City as well as others. Other direct actions in Chicago, Seattle, Philly, Detroit, Portland, San Antonio, Houston, and Sacramento. Ports handling the import and export of logistical hubs are expected to be targeted. Do you target things in a protest or not? What do you do? Where's the National Guard? Where's SWAT? Because one of these days, these uh, peaceful, mostly peaceful pro-Palestinian protests are going to have gunfire and bombs. I told you already about this. Do you know what I mean? It's just a matter of time. It doesn't matter what Israel does. Wake up. doesn't matter what Israel does. Has no, there is no bearing. They could stop shooting tomorrow. These people will still be in the streets till the election easily. The best line on all of this, okay, there's there's one thing. First of all, April 15th, take heed, right? But the best line I heard on this came from Douglas Murray. I was listening to him talk to Sam Harris yesterday on YouTube till Sam Harris was like, if you want to listen to the rest of the interview, please come be a member. I don't like that method. I don't like cutting people off in the middle of a podcast and then like, you know, come on over and spend money. Don't get me wrong. I mean, 
look, I always try to lure you over with all kinds of stuff if you're not a member, but I wouldn't get halfway into a podcast and go, oh, to continue listening. But Douglas Murray had the best, the best comment of all comments on this whole idiotic thing that's happening in America. He said that the people of the pro-Palestinian movements are calling for a ceasefire in the streets of Chicago when they should be calling for a ceasefire in Chicago. You know, where's where are the protests for ceasefires in the <laughs> in the big cities of America where actual Americans are shooting each other up? I don't know. I thought it was brilliant. It's a brilliant way to look at it. It's a brilliant way to capture the pro the, the protesting that we're doing in this country for many things while ignoring much bigger things that are actually happening in our country, right? I've gone long, folks. Um, I'm going. I, we've gone long. That's all. I I, I, I was going to do a, a long SHTF chef on uh, pestos and things like that, but I think we'll get to that another day, maybe tomorrow. I got stuff to do. It's getting dark. I left the lawnmower out. It's probably going to start raining. I got to go take pictures of this beautiful atmospheric water generator system. Uh, members, super simple build. You guys will get the step by step. Oh, and go check out the Hugo Culture video also. Another just insanely simple way to upgrade your growing soil, you know. Grow food, get prepared, PBN family. You know the deal. And uh, please support the sponsors. Go down to the description and uh, go to the PBN links, link tree. Everything you need in there. Everything. Go to the, the link to the podcasting websites. You can go into the live chats and the link to... Um, a variety of sponsors, past and present, a link to membership. And if you're really ready to roll on all of this stuff, go over to yourcheapland.com, buy yourself a piece of land out in the West, and, uh, you know, start building your beautiful homestead away from it all at the base of some beautiful mountains out there in Utah or New Mexico. Like I, I bought a piece of land in New Mexico. What? What do you want to do? You know, oh, the other thing, consumer price index, job reports, $20 minimum wage, the devaluation of the dollar. I can promise you this much. You go over to yourcheapland.com and you'll find a place to put your money that is not going to, the value will never drop unless they start dropping nuclear bombs. <laughs> but other than that, you know, land is land. Land is land and the value will always increase. Put your money in something safe. I know there's a lot of programs for gold and buy gold and this gold and that gold, but there's nothing like land. There's nothing like land. I'll talk to you guys soon. What if I told you you could own land for $200 down and highly affordable monthly payments? Yourcheapland.com is your answer to bug out land, hunting, recreation, and whatever else your uh, prepper mind can dream up. Yourcheapland.com has properties in Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Oklahoma, Arizona, Utah. Go to yourcheapland.com, check out the properties, use the promo code PBN, and get $100 off your purchase.